Hey guys, it's me, my face, and an existential question for you. Can the gods create a bin of whips so large that they themselves cannot move it? Yeah. Happy Dance brought to us today by coffee. I had every intention of it being wine. Wine is way downstairs. Coffee's here coffee wins. Is it in a Halloween mug? Yes. If you're new here, my name is Andrea and this is a channel about cross stitch when I think to actually tell anybody about my cross stitch. Um, if you're a returning visitor, thank you very much. You know what you're getting into. All right. I went down a rabbit hole of other people's whip parades and I'm like, I'm not going to do a whip parade because my whips don't change because I never finish anything. And, and this and the other thing and the whole, and how many finishes did I have this year? I don't know because that would require keeping track. I don't know. So I was not going to do this. I was just going to do a simple floss tube of things that I've worked on recently that I could point to and say, Hey, look, I've made progress. And then I started collecting things. And then I went on Amazon and I bought a bin that could be delivered the next day because everything was everywhere and it was upsetting me. So that's how we got here. Do I have every whip that I think I have? Probably not. There are things in closets that we don't, if I don't remember they exist, they're not whips. They are not in progress. They just exist. Not unlike myself. Anyway, um, but this is going to be substantial. So strap in, get ready to hit that pause button anytime you need to uh, go refresh your drink or pee. Um, understand one leads to the other. And let's jump in. I haven't the slightest idea where to start or how to structure this, so we're just gonna we're just gonna wing it. What? Really? I should probably say that I am filming this on New Year's Eve day. When you see this is anybody's guess. Um, anybody's guess. I really haven't the slightest idea where to start, so we're just gonna start with the first thing that I picked up. This is CD Pumpkin Cottage by Praiseworthy Stitches. Um, I started it a long time ago and I have not done very much on it. I was very excited to be doing this. It was a generous gift from somebody and I still have not gotten very far. I am doing it one over one, 32 count nocturne. No, I'm not doing it one over one. There is one over one. Some of that, those letters are one over one. The rest is, I believe two over two. I don't know. I could be guessing if you're not going to stitch on it, you don't need to know. It's fine. Um, I am using all the called for because this is a very big project. And if I were to start swapping things out, it could go poorly very quickly. Um, this has been a challenge for me to work on because I am not a fan of paper patterns anymore. Um, I lose my place. They get clunky. If I, I cross something off and I end up frogging it or something, I lose track very quickly. I am a pattern keeper girl. And I finally was able to scan all these pages because I think it's like 12 or 14. It's a lot of pages. I scanned them. I assembled them. I got them into pattern keeper and I am at least able to keep track a little better. Obviously, Patent Keeper doesn't pick up like the symbols. There's no searching. There's the over one is just you just have to know that you're doing it over one. But it's been a little easier to work on. I haven't made like a ton of um, I'm sorry, I'm getting notifications and I don't know why I get notifications when I film because I think I had a little button thingy that told it not to do. I don't know. Either way. Hopefully, in 2024, I would like to at least get to 50% on this. I don't think that's an outrageous amount of, of stitching. I think it's just a matter of sitting down and actually doing it and either not getting distracted by other 
projects. Um, or, you know, the days that I say, I, I don't, I don't feel like stitching today. I'm not going to stitch. Just, just, just take it out because when I'm half a length into this, I can stitch it all day. I just have to make myself do it. All right. How am I going to know where I've been? <clears throat> this is probably not going to end up going very well. It's fine. Everything's fine. I think this is, that is the threads that go with that. So I'll keep those together. The next thing I pulled out of the bin is uh, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. This is from Carriage House Sampling. And I am on the last block. When I finish that, the cross stitching will be done. There'll still be some back stitch, and I think there's a couple of French knots or something else. Um, so I'll have to go through and do those, but I am on the last one. And I can't tell you how good that feels. I can't tell you. This is being done one over two on 40 count mallow linen. And let me tell you how much I love mallow. Mallow does not feel good. Mallow is not like a soft linen. It's not buttery. Nobody's ever going to say it's delightful. But my Lord, is it a utilitarian, neutral, easy to stitch on fabric. So good. Um, again, this is another one that I want to have. I want to have goals. I'm the kind of person who would like to have goals. I get very upset when my goals do not manifest um, because they're my goals and I have nobody to blame but myself and who wants to blame themselves? God. Um, but yeah, I would like to see this block finished in January. And I would like to have this finished, finished by Halloween. So all the backstitching, all the anything that I skipped, the whole thing, you know, I didn't skip any actual blocks or anything, but I did, I think I skipped a lot of backstitch. <sighs> so that's a goal. Somebody write that down, because I'm not. I'm already missing a bag. I haven't moved. Whatever. The next uh, whip that I have, I can't say I have been working on it because I have not, is Long Dog Sampler Templar Prophecy. <sighs> I checked this out recently, like within the last month. And I said, you never stitch on these. You never stitch on this. You never stitch on Death by Cross Stitch. Why don't you just restart them? on something that you will enjoy more because I did these, I think, I think one is 28 count, one is 32 count. I don't like stitching with two threads. It doesn't look good. It's tiring to me. It bothers me. It annoys me. So I said, I could take them out. I could, you know, cut the bottom off. I can always reuse the fabric. I kind of want to do it over one, like on 25 or 28. I think I could still do the majority of the back stitch. Anything that isn't going to work just won't work, and that's just life. And if anybody looks at this and says, hey, you didn't put that bird's beak in, you know what you can do. Um, I apologize if you can hear me wheezing. I have not wheezed in forever, and I coughed before I came in here. And now I'm wheezy. We're okay. We're fine. Anyway, this is Templar Prophecy, and this is how far I've gotten. I can't not finish this. I can't, I can't restart it. Look at this thing. Remember me agonizing over the green for the dragon and the, yeah, we can't. We can't just restart that as much as I might like the idea of it. Um, I have, I have uh, uh, another option. You'll see it further. It's in here somewhere. Um, to, you know, get my one over one on. I just look, this is actually two over two on 36 count, not 32. Just to clear out the long dogs, we should probably talk about death by cross stitch as well. This is being done uh, two over two on 32 count Lugana. This is, I, I was going to actually just take it off the, the frame because why is it on a frame? 
It's been sitting there for years, but I didn't. I didn't. You know what? It's so big. It's so big. I knew it was going to be big. I was into that sort of thing when I started this like a thousand years ago. Do I even know when this started? I do not. Editing me might be able to find that out for us. Um, okay, so here's where I got stuck. First of all, I got, I, I don't know why I can't bring myself to do the final row of letters. I, I, I don't know. But the initials go here. And the initial, the, the letters supplied with the pattern, the A and the H don't fit in there. And so I have to, I have to rechart it or I have to figure out what I want to do with it. And I just haven't, I just have not. And so that's a little frustrating. Also, I'm sitting here looking at this saying, if I finish that off there, <laughs> that, that could be the end of the project. I don't do that. I don't do that though. We're going to finish it. We're going to finish it. But yeah, I also considered stopping that and uh, doing it one over one on something else. I don't think I was going to be any happier with it. And again, there's like more than half done there. I can't just, I can't just stop now. The next thing that I have actually been working on is, um, Halloween Quaker. This is from Leela Studios and this was my Halloween start. And not a bad start if I do say so. I am sticking with the called for colors for the most part. I did the moon in Ginger Snap because I liked how it looked on the, not Plum Street, Blackbird. I did uh, Midnight Watch and I liked how it looked on there. So I did it here. I like it as well. This is actually a 40 count piece of, I believe, Nocturne. It was the piece that I had bought to do, sorry, I have an itchy nose. It was the 40 count that I had bought to work on uh, CD Pumpkin Cottage. CD Pumpkin Cottage. We can do this. Um, and then I realized if I did it on 40 count, the buttons weren't going to fit. So I works out quite well for this. I have no intention of finishing this in 2024. But it's a nice thing to work on. It is one of those little like, you know, do a motif and move on sort of thing. So I'm enjoying it. I'm not going to finish it soon. The next thing that I have been actively working on is actually a the pattern from Liz Matthews' Santa's Night Tree. Um, this was from the Jingle Ball. I took her class for finishing this. Um, clearly, I haven't, I haven't finished it yet, but, um, but I took the class, and it was very enjoyable. I loved the Jingle Ball. If I remember at the end, I will talk about the Jingle Ball. I will not remember to talk about the Jingle Ball at the end, but I'm just going to say this out loud. It was fantastic, and I will do it again. All right. Um, things I probably will not do again is this pattern. And I love Liz Matthews. The woman is talented. The woman knows what she's doing. Can I just tell you about this plaid baloney going on down here? I did like this whole top part in like three days, and it has been now a month and a half of working on this plaid. And uh, she did a video and she's like, oh, it's very repetitive. You know, you can just get into pretty mindless. This is not mindless. I've done it four times. I, I keep making mistakes and and it's plaid. So you're going to notice it. And then let me tell you about what I noticed is the people I see posting these online did not do the plaid. They found like a variegated something, something that sort of had these colors and they just did that and they look fine. Am I going to pick it out? Probably not. I don't know. I haven't decided. I have decided that what I'm doing this on is 36 count Nantucket Eve. Anybody's guess who, uh, who makes that, but, um, yeah, I don't like it. The fabric is beautiful. This is a beautiful colorway. I am not a fan of 36 count at all. Um, it's very slippy. I don't know if I can get close enough for you to see that it's very, it's very loosey goosey. I, I am not a loosey goosey stitcher. I am not, I need, need my fabric to support me. And, um, I don't know what that is. Um, and this is not, 
this is not supporting my way. I think I might have enjoyed this more if I was doing one over one. That might have done. It might have felt a little more not loosey goosey. Andrea, they understand what you're saying. Will I finish this? Yes, because I want to make a tree. I want to make a tree. I want to make like seven trees. I have all sorts of ideas for trees. I am I am actively in my brain designing Halloween trees for next year. Will will I will I have them? To, no, no, I won't. But it's fine. They're in here. Eventually, they'll get over there. You can't see the computer, but it's there. And at some point, things will get into the Etsy shop. I managed moments before Christmas to get some Christmas things, a Christmas thing, I think, um, up into the Etsy shop. So, um, you know, it happens. Either way, either way, it's a beautiful pattern. I want it to work. I want it to look good. I will figure something out. It'll get done. It'll be a tree before I die. I don't know if I also, met, first of all, I don't remember if I actually ever showed you that before. So if I did, and that was repetitive, yeah. Um, the recommended fabric uh, was Topaz from somebody, somebody. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I emailed uh, Stephanie at Lindy Stitches. I said, you know, I'm taking the jingle ball thing with, with Liz and I'm having trouble finding Topaz. You know, I found this Nantucket Eve on your site. Do you feel like that would work? You know, do you have a particularly dark piece? It looked kind of light to me. She wrote me back like, like she had to have been sitting there waiting for me to ask this question because she was like, yes. Oh my goodness. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay, fine. I placed the order and within like 17 minutes, I had my shipping confirmation. It was, I'd say the girl needs a hobby, but I really benefit from her jumping on things like that. So the next thing I have actively been working on is a uh, prairie schooler santa it is this is 2021 2021 and i got he's still headless i'm sorry i'm sorry um but i had to get that raccoon in because raccoon look at him look at him um just his tail just his tail i'm dying this uh <laughs> it looks like a dog looking backwards i don't think it's gonna look that way i think it's a reindeer I say, I think as if I'd never seen the pattern. I don't, I don't, I don't recall. Um, Andrea, there's a picture right in front of you. Yes, it is a dog facing backwards. Stop trying to tell stories. Um, this will now be my, you know what? I don't know how many Prairie Santas I've done. So why guess? This is my not first Prairie Schooler Santa. How am I going to finish all of these? I don't know. I don't know. My the only plan I have is that I'm going to do them all on 40 count and I'm going to kind of make it a point to not do more than a couple on the same fabric or at least not like ones that are sequential. Like I won't do the 2022 on this fabric. Um, does that mean they'll end up being flat folds, ornaments, dust rags? We don't know. We don't know. But this is it's part of a plan and part of a plan is better than no plan. I don't want to hear about it. I'm also pretty sure I have shown this before. Um, I keep my Prairie uh, Schooler Santas in the project bag that I received in the Smalls Exchange at Stitch New England. Fun fact, I am going into the shop next week because she has walk-in registration for next year's. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Um, but yeah, this was... Uh, Look at this bit of stitching. This is, I never, I never caught up with the person who made this. I know her name is Lily and I know she's from Orlando. That is what I know. Um, but look at how pretty this is. And I've shown you this before and I don't care. Look at the little, come on, just come on. It was just asking for Prairie School of Santas to be in it. I'm showing you this just so I can move it in the thing. I have not actively worked on this. This is a Mill Hill. This is Wanda's Witchery. And do I have a... Yes, I do. Um, I've done much of it. I do not enjoy 
the perforated paper. I enjoy the way perforated paper comes out. Uh, Mama Loves You GB has done the owls on perforated paper. I want every one of them, but I know I will loathe the stitching on them. So I have not bought any, but um, I have every intention of completing this. I, I, It's not that I don't like it anymore. I want to do it. I want to do the beads. I even have another one that needs to be done. I just never go looking for this. I feel like it, it, it's weird. I feel like if I could be stitching on this, I could be stitching on anything. Yeah, that doesn't bode well for this. Um, yeah, no, no real intention to getting to this in 2024. I'm not getting rid of it. I panic every time I move this envelope because the beads are in here in little plastic bags and I don't realize they're in little plastic bags and I think they're going to go everywhere and they don't because they're in little plastic bags. We're fine. I'm just telling you that. The next thing I've been actively working on is probably my most anticipated start. The thing that I have been wanting to do for so long and I kept pushing it away and putting it back and forgetting that it existed and things like that. And then every time I would come by it, I'd be like, why, why am I not working on that? I love that. This is Oh Christmas Tree from All Through the Night. And this was my Christmas start. And just look at all the little doodads. I think that's why I love this to start with. It's just, it's a whole bunch of little doodads. And um, this is my first time stitching with Valdani. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's a lot like stitching with um, Weeks Dye Works. I feel like it's that dry feeling, and I don't know why we all refer to it as dry, but it is. It's dry. Um, but it hasn't been bad. It will, it's a little tangly. It can get a little tangly. Um, I am really, really good at always cutting my lengths of thread way too long, and that's probably why a lot of them knot up more than they should. But, um, but I've been enjoying working on this. I'm a little, I'm not going to say disappointed in the color. Um, it's the called for olive. Naturally, I don't have the fabric information in front of me. I, oh, I do. I do. Hold, please. This is 40 count lentil uh, from Lakeside. So I am loving, loving the fabric. Um, so no disappointment there. I feel like if you're seeing the picture there, it was a little greener. It came out, a, um, it came off a little greener than this is, but um, I don't dislike it. I think it's going to be really nice once it's finished. I have every intention of, of finishing this like by March, April, because it's it's really moving quickly. This is only like a night and a half of stitching on it. So it's moving along. Can I also tell you how much I am loving my Nourish hoops? Loving my Nourish hoops. Do I leave my thing in there way longer than I probably should? Yes. Yes, definitely. Do I loosen it at the... No. Um, but yeah, that's my gig. That's how I do it. But I do enjoy them. I think the tension's good. I like... I like that when the tension isn't good, I can just kind of nudge it and it just goes. It's not like a regular hoop that I feel like is just going to eat the fabric. So, recommend. All right, I'm not going to say that I've been actively working on this, but I have at least worked on it, I think, since the last time we met. This is Moon Hair from um, Heaven and Earth Designs. And, I mean, it's a hade, so you rarely can see what anybody has worked on. But I edged in this ear and I filled in some of the cream colors. I am trying to see if you can see that. If you can't, you just need to take my word for it that there's uh, there's cream colored rabbit in, in there. Um, this is another one that I keep saying, you know, if you worked on it, you'd probably be done by now because that's obvious. Um, I still like it. I still want it. I still want, I want to display it. I want it to be hanging up. I just never, because it's a hade and it's frustrating when you stitch for five hours and you have like this much to show for it. Um, but that's the way they build up. That's the way any pattern builds up. So I just need to suck it up and do it. 
I just, I just haven't. I just haven't. It's projects like this that make me wonder if I would benefit from WIPCO. Because a little structure can go a long way. On the other hand, I have a tendency to be a little bit resentful when something tells me what I'm supposed to be doing. So if it says work on your haid, I might just be in the mood to say, I'm going to work on anything other than that haid. And now I have already defeated myself. Go me. All right, this next whip I have not touched in a very long time. Um, this is Wicked Christmas. This is from, it's Sarah, Sarah Giermann. I can pronounce people's names. I just honestly have never stopped to learn hers, and I apologize. Um, this is also being done on 40 Count Mallow. Let me tell you how much I like 40 Count Mallow. And I, I don't honestly know why I stopped working on this. I remember very early on having to say to people, hey, that star's in the wrong place. Remind me not to uh, stitch anything off of the position of that star. And that's pretty much as far as I've gotten. So I don't know if this is a very open pattern. I'm probably seeing something over there. And I am not an overly confident um, counter when it comes to, especially, you know, when I'm going over, over two, I, I get paranoid and I pull out the pins and I have the counting pins and I have the little, I have the ones that are connected. So you do like tick, 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 10, and then you leave that one there and then you pull the other one up and you go tick, 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 10. You don't have to make the sound effects. I'm just saying, um, I have that and it seems reasonable and yet it still makes me paranoid and I can't count further out. So I, I kept saying to myself like, well, I'm going to stitch to a point where I can key other things or I can move to the sides and do, and I just never did that. Um, my stitchy godmother, Lara, I've mentioned before, she made me a pillow. She also made me, and you're probably seeing a picture of it, Halloween from Sarah. And it inspired me to take this out and put it back on the scroll rods and say, I am going to start working on this again. It got to the scroll rods. It's something. I think I should make a plan on this one. Maybe just to touch it once a month. Maybe just a uh, put in one length and then you can move away if you don't want to do it anymore that day. Um, or I just have to convince myself to suck it up, count 37 stitches to the right, and just start. Just do a thing. If it's in the wrong place, we'll find a way around it. I'm so positive. This is another one that is a whip but has not changed since the last time we met. This is Laughing Moon. This is from Dames of the Needle. She really hasn't gone very far. Um, she has a head. I, I, there may not have been a head last time, but th there's a head now. Um, I like this pattern. I'm going to like it when it's done. I think I like this better than the fabric that they put the original on. Um, It's just, it's very, I don't say it's hard to follow. It's, it's not difficult. I think I get myself a little trapped with some of these swirly bits. Like I'll get down into here and then I have no path back out to, you know, so there's a lot of start and stop. That's a me problem. It's not a pattern problem. Um, but I can, there is not that much left in this. I would like to finish this in January. Again, I hope somebody's writing this down because I sure as heck haven't. I refer to this in my um, my Trello thing as uh, a 20 count Ada of Mysterious Origins. So, you know it's got to be good. This is another whip that hasn't been touched since I showed it to you last. This is Be Happy and it is from the Primitive Hair. And this was a start at Stitch New England this year. I like the start. I like it. I like the, I like the whole thing. I um, I even like that very bright orangey yellow. 
I just have not had, I say I haven't had the reason to pull it out. I just, I think anytime I went looking for something after October, I either wanted Halloween or Christmas and this clearly is neither, but it's probably going to be good. I don't generally do spring and summery patterns. So this might be a good one to do shooting for, for spring. Maybe to say have it finished by May. We'll see. This is being done on 20 count Ada that I coffee tea dyed myself. And we know that because I burnt it. Um, that is literally crispy. Um, you know, because Vana told me to bake and baste it, but I probably didn't pay attention to how long she said to bake it. And I... what are you going to do? It'll be fine. I'm going to say right now, I am going to link this big old basket thingy down below with a uh, affiliate link, hashtag subtle, um, because this thing is amazing. I'm very much enjoying working with this thing right now, because otherwise I had everything everywhere and we would all have been upset. This I have not touched since we last met. This is Autumn Stars from Sub Rosa. And I think I had been saying it was a freebie and I don't think it was. It's 2022 fall punch needle primitive stitcher magazine. I love them to death, but my goodness, can't we just call it Bob or something? I just, you know. Um, so this is forget. I don't know how much. I think I just have a border. It has a border and I have a bird to do and a pumpkin. Did you just say pumpkin in front of people? I did that. Um, this is a nice, comfortable stitch. This is a not thinking about it too much stitch, which I think is maybe why I haven't gone back to it. I started this at Stitch New England, the store, um, they had open stitching on, or they still have it, on Saturdays. And I went once. I went all of once. I was going to go every Saturday, but that didn't happen. Um, and I wanted to take something that I didn't have to think too much about, and I put it on 18 count Ada, so I could knew I could see it no matter what. And I just haven't gone back to it. And I think at least once I've said, no, you better save that in case you go back there. Then you'll have something you can work on. That's not how we get stuff done. I think we need a coffee break. Good call. This I don't even think we can call a start. We can call it a start. I don't think we can call it a whip. Um, this is the moon phases from the little stitcher and I'm doing the new moon colorway. And that's what I got. This is another one that I started at the stitch new England retreat and I haven't gotten very far. I don't like the way the hair is blending in so much with the fabric. So I know in my head, I was like, well, I'm just going to change the color of the hair. And that made me think, well, then I have to think about this and I have to rechart and I have not gone back to it. I love the pattern. I've had it for, I'll put it up here, some number of years. This is one of the first things I ever bought to stitch. That's how long ago this was. I have liked it for that long. I have seen it done. I want to say... Did Cozy Egg do this? Michelle, did you do this? Um, I've seen it done. I love it. I know. I want it done. Andrea, pull it together. Maybe I should make a plan. Don't even say it. Don't even say you're going to make a plan to do it in the summer so it'll be done for... You're not going to. Let's just hope I pull it some point this year. This is also being done on 20 count Ada that I burnt. This is one that I think I actually have touched since the last time we met. This is Halloween Parade from Misty Purcell, Luminous Fiber Arts. And I did a fair amount of it. What do I have left to do? I have a little more of that kind of star border and that 
stop order. And um, then there's Halloween below. Yes, which I will definitely do. Um, cute. I love this. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying stitching it. This is 20 count hand dyed Ada by Laura, my stitchy godmother. You want, she made me a pillow. Um, this is Swamp Thing. And this is by far one of my favorite colorways. Can you have some? Probably not. She doesn't dye for just anyone. She doesn't dye fabric for just anyone. Um, it's because she likes me. I'm not entirely sure why. Please don't tell her. I think this is my last outstanding whip that I have readily access to right now. Let's say it that way. Um, this is, oh my God, what is it? This is Crow's Lullaby. This is from The Primitive Hair. And I've been working on this straight up probably 27 years. I don't know. I just, you see it, it's on the frame. It hasn't been off the frame in I don't know how long. All the lettering is done. I just need to do the, um, like the branchy tree thing happening. Um, I honestly don't even know how much is left. I don't know if I went like this way and up and now I have the rest of the bottom to do. This is, let's find out together. So, yeah, this is why we're not working on it is because uh, <laughs> we have a lot more to do at the bottom. Um, that would be why. So, yeah, all the lettering is done, but there's still a fair amount of black to be done on the side. Um, I know exactly why I stopped stitching on this. I hate this fabric. I loved this fabric for a very long time. This is the mystery fabric that I found at um, Savers. And I'm pretty sure it is upholstery fabric. It was never meant to be stitched on. It can be okay to stitch on, but I feel like it is a one over one situation with this. Um, doing two over is very crowded and not very even, so things are wonky. Um, this can so totally be finished. I bet you it's like three nights of stitching. <sighs> what do we want to do? I don't know. Do we want to try to aim for a Halloween finish for this? Why not? Is what are, are they going to come for me if I don't? No. There is no cross-stitching police. If there was... More than one of us would have been taken away by now. So that is it for whips, which really is not bad. Was anybody counting? I was not counting. There weren't too many. Um, I have a couple of finishes, um, but they're not my, like, you've seen, uh, I think the first, the, Let's start again. The last real, real pattern I finished was Blackbird. And that was October. Then I kind of got onto this thing where I actually had some fairly decent ideas for patterns and I kind of got into my own head and started working on some of them. One of them I did manage to finish it was just one day that I just wanted to stitch little Christmas trees. And so I charted like a gajillion little Christmas trees. And aren't they cute? So cute. Um, it's in the Etsy store. Hashtag, I have an Etsy store. Um, if you're interested. But I finished that. I clearly did not fully finish it because it's just sort of wedged in there. Um, because, you know, I had to take pictures of it. So, um, it does need to be 
done better, but I like it. I think it's, it's, first of all, it's weird to hold it that way. It's modern ish in that, you know, it's not fussy. It's not, uh, you know, swoopy Victorian, which is my gig. It's totally my gig, but I can't, um, design that. So these are just patterns. They're patterns and colors, and you could use any colors that you wanted and follow the patterns. You could do a uh, two by two, four by four, whatever makes you happy. Um, so yeah, I did that. If you're looking for them, they are called uh, non-denominational winter holiday conifers. You're welcome. Did I not just make fun of uh, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine for having a... I did. I did that. The other thing that I worked on, and it's not in the Etsy store, and I don't know that it's going to be. Um, several months ago, Mark was outside and he heard crying down the street. Mark goes running because that's what he does. Um, and it turned out to be this tiny little black kitten. And if I have a decent picture, I will put it up. Uh What's the matter? <coughs> oh, my poor baby. It's not so bad. <coughs> um... It's very difficult to take a picture of a black kitten, especially when he is burrowing into somebody's coat because he's freezing. He was freezing out there and he was mad. That cat was mad. Um, couldn't find any litter mates, couldn't find a mama. So we, we brought him in and long story short, we kept them overnight and then brought him to a shelter who has put him in a foster home so that he could gain some weight and things like that. So I was thinking about him, who I, you know, I named, I named him. I know you're not supposed to name him, but he was loud and he was fuzzy. And so I named him Fizzgig. And so I was thinking about Fizzgig. I was thinking about our kitty, Dante. And how, you know, in the past couple of years, we lost her brother, Socks. And before that, long before that, we lost Shadow. And I was just thinking about what would happen if those little kitties... You know, what if the two kitties that are here now were, were sitting and looking at a, at a Christmas tree? And what if the kitties that have passed were were sitting there too? And and what and I just yeah, because you know, is that not the cutest little kitten in the whole entire universe? That's Fizzgig. That's Fizzgig right there. I will also point out that those are French knots. Or colonial knots. I haven't the slightest idea. I do them. It makes a knot. I don't get involved with with their naming. But um, I just think that came out cute. And, uh, you know, clearly I haven't ironed it or done anything with it. But um, I think that'll make a cute little hoop finish. And just put it out at Christmas time. And remember, remember our kitties. A little familiar's past. Next, I have things that are kitted that I plan on starting. Maybe I know when, maybe I don't. Let's find out. Sitting here, I have just realized that I am missing one. It's way over there. I don't know that I'm going to get it. So, we'll get to that. All right, this is Halloween House Trio from Waxing Moon Designs. And I have, I have decided that I am going to do, I'm sure you're seeing a picture, but there's, there's three of them because it's a trio. Um, I've decided to do them top to bottom. So I have this piece of 40 count old colonial from Victorian Motto. This was a gift from, it says Metro Stitcher. I'm sure you have a name. I It says Metro Stitcher. Um, so I think that's going to work out really nicely. I would like to... I think I've said before, 
my house has a weird amount or placement of windows, <clears throat> excuse me, and doors. And I have so many like long skinny places that it's tough to find things to fill that space. So this is going to work out just fine. This is a paper pattern. Do I want to say that this is from Laura? Did you send me this? I think you did. I've had this for a while and meant to start it and just never got around to it. Do I have... It appears that I have swapped out every color. I have noted here. Um, going from... You know what it is? I think I kitted this when I wasn't in a gassed thread of the month kind of dealy nest egg. So I m moved all the gas into classic color works and weeks dye works. And probably at this point I could go back to the, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, it's kitted. It's done. We're, we're, we're ready. When am I going to start that? I haven't the slightest idea. This is little house needleworks needle worker. This is, we all bought it. We all bought it a million years ago. Um, I think I had this on a Christmas list and Mark actually bought it for me. Um, never started it. So I have for it, do I not even know what this is? Oh, here we go. What is this? Oh, this is the other part of old colonial 40 count um, Victorian motto. That makes sense. Um, Oh, that looks small, but yeah, it's 40 counts, so it'll probably be okay. If it's not, you'll hear from me. Um, when am I going to start it? I don't know. I don't know. I think the word is eventually. This is going to be my start tonight. Um, Abby Bella Stitch had her birthday stitch this year be, um, got the morbs from Modern Folk Embroidery. And I bought it with every intention of doing the stitch along for her birthday. And here we are. Um, so I've decided to make it my New Year's Eve start. And I'm going to put it on this mystery purple. <sighs> Was this a gift from the same person who sent me the purple project bags. I think that sounds accurate. I think that sounds accurate. Um, so I'm doing this and I am doing from the never ending Hank of black, um, silks for you silk. I just, I just took off another, get in there. Um, like, Andrea doesn't know how to cut her things to a reasonable length, but I'm doing one over one. So this is like more than what I'm going to need. This Hank never ends. It just every time I pull it out, I think there's more in there. I'm not complaining, but I am nervous. So this is the project that I will be working on tonight after the Chinese food. And when we're watching Ryan Seacrest and hurling obscenities at him because what do you do on New Year's Eve? And this is the last. This will be my New Year's Day start. Um, after the champagne, after the leftover Chinese food, I will start this. <sighs> this is Long Dog Sampler Pandemic. I always had every intention of doing this, you know, when there was a pandemic. Not completely convinced there isn't one now, but still. Um, this is 32 count, 32 count, Andrea, what are you, 28 count, thank you. I'm not that crazy. 28 count Ivory Lugana. I'm going to do one over one. The base color for, I believe, most of anything that's like a straight line, like a boundary or a barrier, is going to be 310. Unless I go and get some anchor might do that. Um, and then I have, I pulled 500, 814, 3834, and 823. 
and I'm going to use those as accent colors and I'm going to be aggressive, <clears throat> I guess, with my um, accent colors. In the past for my long dogs, I've always, um, I've used the accent color kind of sparingly and probably more sparingly than I should have. I know I went back through um, Death by Cross Stitch at one point and added more, like I picked out stuff that I had done in black and put in more of the, uh, the variegated. Uh, so I think I'm just going to make this colorful. I gotta, I gotta stop worrying like, oh, am I going to work on this for two years? And then when it's done, I'm not going to want to hang it up or something. Who cares? I got a box full of things I haven't hung up yet. It's fine. It'll be fine. Stitch the thing. So I'm going to stitch the thing. And this is going to scratch that one over one, uh, long dog sampler itch. And if I choose to work on this more than I choose to work on Templar Prophecy and Death by Cross Stitch, that's what happens. And that, I think, is it. <laughs> um, not as much as a lot of people have. Um, probably a little more than I thought I had. I think sometimes I, I don't think of smalls as projects. They're just sort of over there hanging around waiting for me to do something. Um, so when I assemble them like this, it seems like a lot more than the Q-snaps that I keep grabbing off of my, my whip shelf, uh, which I'm trying to get rid of my whip shelf. I, uh, 2024 is going to be the year of organization. This room is my craft room. This room is my office and it is really not big enough to be either. So I am, I invested in the big bin. I have two sets of like storage cubes coming tomorrow, maybe Tuesday, something like that, um, to go under the sewing table. I have those fabric bins and boxes, but they don't really stack. Like you, they have lids so you can put them on top of each other, but now you have to move 20 things to get to the thing. And it was kind of annoying me. So I got kind of a storage grid that I can put them in and I can pull them out individually. And maybe I could label them. Maybe I could even go through them and throw things out because they really are doom boxes, which if you understand the, the term doom, it's didn't organize, only moved. And we have lots of, if you're like me and like you have to clean off a table, so you take a plastic bag and you shove everything into the bag, you tie a knot in it and you put it over there and you say, I will go through that later. That's a doom bag. Didn't organize, only moved. Um, what's scary is when you know which doom bag something is in and where to find it and how to get to it, because that just encourages you to keep doing it. The last thing I need is encouragement. I'm looking around trying to think, oh, the new start that I forgot to bring over here is going to be ink circles. You're seeing the information here. Is it Byzantine tiles? That doesn't sound right. It's something. It is definitely, it's definitely something. Oh, hold on. This is why we bring out the tablet, right, Andrea? Right? Because maybe you were smart enough. <laughs> maybe you were smart enough um, to actually Baroque. It's Baroque. And I am doing it on 40 count. It's 40 count linen that Laura, Laura made me a pillow, um, neutral linen that she sent. And I am doing that on, I, I'm doing that, I think, 1 over 2 in 814. This was something that I actually put up on Instagram one day. I have probably 12 skeins of 814. I don't know why. It's pretty color. I have no idea why I needed that many skeins at any point in my life. So I just sort of laid them out and said, what would you do with them? And a lot of people came back with an ink circles. And I have only ever done one ink, ink circles and I gave that away. So I don't actually have it. Um, so I do intend to start that like not today or tomorrow, but maybe even in January just to get that going because I think that'll look really pretty. And I do have an option 
kind of in my head. If I look at it and I think it needs an accent color, I think I had 803. I have it, 803, maybe. Who am I talking to? What? <sighs> Whatever. Um, either way, that was that's the missing new start. I don't think I have anything else to show. Um, like I said, I went to Jingle Ball and I enjoyed that a great deal. I did three classes and I enjoyed them all. But I think maybe next time I might do only one or two. I did not think about, I, tell you, I, I didn't realize that for the $10 admission fee, you really get to do a lot of things. I figured the $10 would give me, you know, access to some things and, you know, the stitching tables and things like that. But, um, I didn't realize like that would have been enough that, you know, that would have been, um, a great time. And then one or two classes, uh, not because even they took up so much time or anything like that, but because I stressed over these things. Um, two of them had pre-stitching and I clearly didn't finish the Liz Matthews one. So I stressed over that. I didn't need to. Most people say they didn't finish the stitching, so it was fine. Um, I did the pre-stitching for the Biscornu. Hold on. The Janine McGowan Biscornu. I did the pre-stitching for that. And then when I sat down with all my materials and everything and I'm watching her finish, I'm like, there's no way I can keep up with this. I'm not going to run over and get my iron on and, and things and stuff. So I had it done, but I didn't actually do anything with it yet, which is fine. I have all the instructions now. It's fine. Um, but I didn't need to have stress over either of those. And I did. And then the last one was, um, Kathy Haberman and the block party, which she didn't give us the pattern for until like, I think a couple of days before the class. Um, and, and I'm not sure why, um, cause I would have liked to have had a head start on that stitching. I think I probably could have pretty easily finished that pre-stitching. Um, but I do think that there was a fair amount of instruction on for the people who got the kits, they got a piece of fabric and it was divided very specifically for this is the edge and this is the top and the bottom and then you have this extra piece and and these things so i'm wondering if maybe she chose to say don't stitch anything until i can talk to you because she needed to very clearly explain what that fabric was doing i'm guessing i don't know either way i have the pattern it's adorable i plan on doing it i knew i was going to finish it for this christmas um but it's it's a very quick stitch um so I don't think I'll have any problem doing it for next Christmas. Will I have a problem having it finished into a cute little box by then? I, it, we don't know. We don't know. We try not to worry about these things. Um, so there's that. But I will definitely be signing up for next year. Um, every single person I interacted with was wonderful. I didn't see the only people I saw having issues were having technical issues with their own setup. It wasn't a jingle ball problem. I hear a lot of people on that kind of platform and things like that say, I'm not technical. If you are out on the internet interacting with people and using a browser, you need to at least learn how to use the browser. It's not technical. It's just a browser. It's not asking you to do anything other than click buttons. You're fine. You got You got to get a rate on that. Um, the more majority of people I saw with issues, it was like, it was solved by shut your browser down and start it again or clear your cache and cookies, which is not a difficult thing. It's, I think in Chrome, it's like two clicks. So, um, so yeah, I didn't really see anybody having any issues. And honestly, I think the most enjoyable part of it for me was the designer meet and greets, which you didn't have to sign up for anything. You just sort of showed up. Um, they were entertaining. They were interesting. Everybody had their husband along. <laughs> like these guys are great. Um, it was, it's, it's very nice 
to see women in businesses and things like that. And there's their husband right there supporting them and, and helping out and taking that secondary, you know, Hey, you, you're the star, you do your thing. I'll be over here wrangling the cat. You know who I'm talking about. Um, you know, I'll, I'll read the questions out to you while you are doing things and stuff like that. And I will read the comments where people say, Oh, can you move that to the middle of the screen or you're falling off the side? Un they were so great. I was really pleased the the, the families that uh, took part were fantastic. I keep saying I think that's it. And I think this time that it is it. If it isn't it, maybe I just have to make another video one of these days. Um, maybe that should be my biggest goal for 2024 is to make at least a monthly video. I stitch enough that, you know, I have things to show. So I, I don't know why I put off um, making the video. Um, I think I might get back into the habit of filming as I stitch and not really doing this my face quite as much, but we'll see. We'll see how that works. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your likes and even your dislikes. I know who you are. But most of all, thank you for being my community. Thank you for giving me reasons to interact with people and for giving me good, safe places to go. I hope to see a lot more of you in 2024. I hope you see a lot more of me in 2024. And um, I will talk to you all soon. Bye, guys.